Hello doctors, this is Dr. Yasmin Haseeb. I welcome you all to my channel Royal Doc Line. This is a 5 minutes guideline series and I would like to remind you regarding these 5 minutes guideline series to go through these videos before you delve down into the guideline material by the RCOG. This will help you to understand the important points. This material will act as a backbone while reading the guideline. So my today's topic is the placenta previa and the placenta accreta diagnosis and the management. This is the green top guideline number 27A. It was published in September 2018. Coming towards the layout of the guideline, it will be comprises of introduction risk factors, screening, placenta previa, diagnosis, management, antenatally and at the delivery. Similarly, we will also see the placenta accreta spectrum, its management during the pregnancy and delivery and in the end, I will go into the summary of the guideline. Let's move on to the introduction. As you all know that the placenta previa is associated with the high maternal and the new natal morbidity and the mortality. Guideline says that the placental localization is the first aim of routine mid-pregnancy scan which is done at 18 weeks and 6 days to 21 weeks and 6 days of the pregnancy. American Institute of Ultrasound in the Medicine, they have changed the definition of the placenta previa so now the pregnancies which are more than 16 weeks of the gestation and on the ultrasound if the placenta is covering the internal loss of the cervix then it is classified as placenta previa. And if the placenta is less than 20 millimeters from the internal loss this is called as a low lying placenta previa or however if the placenta is more than 20 millimeters then this is called as a normal placenta. Regarding the definition of the placenta accreta, it was given in 1937 by Irving and Hattage and according to them, the abnormal adherence of the afterbirth in a whole it in parts to the underlying uterine wall in partial or the complete absence of the decidua. Coming towards the risk factors, you all know that the previous cesarean section, smoking, artificial reproductive technology, advanced maternal age. These are all the important risk factors. Let's move on to the antenatal diagnosis and the care of the woman with placenta previa or a low-lying placenta. First is the screening. According to the guideline, we need to screen all the women at, at the mid-pregnancy scan for the type of the placenta she is carrying. If it is a placenta previa, then the guideline recommends the transvaginal scan at 32 weeks as the positive predictive value is 93.3% and the negative predictive value is 97.6%. This is an important exam question. However, if the patient remains asymptomatic, then you need to do the scan at 36 weeks again or if the patient is having some other risk factors like cesarean section, you can do the scan even 32 to 36 weeks of the gestation. Over here, it is important to measure the cervical neck if the patient is at the risk of having the preterm birth to avoid any obstetrical hemorrhage before time. In the third trimester, if the patient remains symptomatic, then you will decide whether she must be in the hospital or she can be managed at home. It is to be decided by the type of the risk factor she is having. However important is the counseling of this patient. The other type of the patients who are asymptomatic, their management is individualized depending upon the factors in their management. Please ensure that the safety precautions are in place like the companion should be there if the patient is away from the hospital so that he or she can bring the patient to the hospital. Important points over here in the guideline are cervical circlage in the context of placenta previa. The guideline says there is insufficient evidence for the role of cervical circlage. Regarding the corticosteroid therapy, a single course to be given at 34 weeks to 35 weeks and 6 days in the high risk cases. Tocolysis is only done in the placenta previa if you think this is important. However, make sure that the fetus and the mother are in the good health. 
So no need to compromise the health of both if tocolysis is to be considered. Now, regarding the management of the woman at the time of birth, so over here the discussion and the documentation of your discussion is very important and the consent will include the blood transfusion, place of the birth, hysterectomy and any plans to decline the blood or the blood products as you remember about the Jehovah's Witness. Discussion about the anesthesia should also be there and discuss about the need of the conversion of the regional anesthesia into the general anesthesia if the need arises. Place of delivery should be a one where the blood transfusion services and the critical care bed is available. Women with the atypical antibodies should have the opinion from the hematologist and the discussion about the cell salvage and the blood product should be done. If the placenta previa or a low-lying placenta is there, you are going to manage it. The consultant obstetrician and the anesthetist should be aware about it and they should physically be present in the theater. In case the emergency arises, they can immediately take care of the case. Regarding the cesarean section or the surgical approach, in these cases, time of the delivery should be 36 to 37 weeks or as per the clinical situation. The late preterm delivery, which is 34 to 36 plus 6 weeks, in those cases which are high risk for the preterm labor, can be taken into account. Regarding the incision in the uterus, it should be vertical at less than 28 weeks or in case of transverse line. Try to avoid cutting the placenta. However, if it cuts by accident, clamp the cord immediately to avoid the loss of the fetal blood. This is an important exam question. Regarding the mechanical method, the tamponers, Bakri balloon, Sachs taken, Blackmore tube, here the success rate is 75 to 88%. Bale inch or the other tamponers along with the bale inch can be done. Interventional radiological team involvement can be there, but remember early resort to the cesarean hysterectomy is important in order to avoid any maternal and the fetal morbidity and the mortality. Next is the placenta accreta spectrum. Over here, as you all know, the risk factors are previous history of the cesarean sections or the placenta previa accreta and the cesarean delivery itself. Previously, uterine surgery any type, including the myomectomy cell as well. The diagnosis is made by the scan and if the patient is having a previous cesarean suction, one should be very alert about it. MRI may be complementary to ultrasound to see the extent of the accreta. The time of the delivery should be planned around about 35 to 36 weeks and 6 days. And again over here, the specialist center should be opted for the delivery with the intensive care units for the mother, new needle intensive care unit for the mother, multidisciplinary team approach in collaboration with the complex pelvic surgical experts. Again, the consent for massive hemorrhage, blood transfusion, urinary tract injuries and the hysterectomy should be in place. Let's move on to the surgical approach in the placenta accreta spectrum. The options are if the patient has completed her family, the placenta can be left in situ and the cesarean section along with the hysterectomy can be opted. However, the guideline also says about the expected management leaving the placenta. The decision should be taken at the expert level and the patient should be informed beforehand about it. The follow-up will be with the ultrasound only. There is no role of the methotrexate in it. Other option is the interventional radiology by the uterine artery embolization. Over here, you will see few questions in the exam which are important from my next discussion. The question can be, if you find an undiagnosed or unsuspected placenta accreta spectrum, at the delivery, you are doing a cesarean section and you find it out. So what will be the management option? Stop the surgery unless an expert is available in case the fetal maternal condition is available. However, you may need to close the abdomen and refer the patient to the specialist unit if such expertise are not available. If the diagnosis is made after the delivery of the baby, you can leave the placenta in situ and proceed for hysterectomy as per case scenario. This is called as a care bundle which is developed by NPSA National Patient Safety Agency, RCOG and the Royal College of the Midwives. 
It includes a consultant obstetrician, consultant anesthetist, blood blood products to be available, multidisciplinary team approach, discussion and consent with the patient. We discussed it all previously and there should be the availability of the level 2 critical bed. This was uh, taken as such from the guideline and this is an important part which can be discussed with you even at your OSCE. In summary, the incidence of the placenta previa is 1 in 200. No more partial or the marginal placenta terminology has been changed as we saw previously. Only the placenta previa or the low-lying placenta is used and the incidence of the accreta in the placenta previa without previous cesarean section is 3.3 to 4 percent. Screening is to be done at the anomaly scan, follow-up scan at 32 weeks and if the patient remains asymptomatic, the scan is 36 weeks and it is TVS, transvaginal scan. Transvaginal scan reclassifies the placenta previa in 26 to 60 percent of the cases which are diagnosed at transabdominal scan. Transvaginal scans sensitivity is 87.5 percent and the specificity is 98.8 percent. Odd ratios are very important to memorize for your exam point of view and the placenta previa with one cesarean suction is 3%, with 2 it is 11, with 3 it is 40, with 4 61 and 67% after the 5 cesarean sections. This is for accreta, placenta previa with accreta. Remember this and the clinical governance you all know includes the incident reporting, debriefing, skills and drills. So this is the end of the guideline 27A. If you like this video, please give this video thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will see you soon with my next video.